The long smoldering fight of the Kanaka Maoli people to save sacred Mauna Kea blew up like a volcano last week when work crews arrived to begin construction of the 30 meter telescope. Kanaka Maoli elders, some using wheelchairs, strollers, or canes, demanded to be taken to the front line to be arrested. They oppose further damage and desecration of the mountain, which has had 13 smaller telescopes constructed on it since 1960, each se subsequent one called the last telescope. The blockade forced work stoppage of dozens of astronomers and researchers, and since the arrests of 35 people last Wednesday, thousands of Hawaiians have blocked all access to the mountain. Hawaii Governor David Ike signed an emergency proclamation threatening Mauna protectors with police and National Guard. And over 2,000 Kanaka Maoli turned out in response to the arrest and threats to pack the base of the mountain three times the previous protector presence, a presence only slightly smaller since the weekend. Governor Ike attacked the protectors again Friday in a press conference alleging illegal activity. But all the local media went out there and reported the opposite to be the case. KHON2 TV News reported there are absolutely no signs of drugs or alcohol. No one's even allowed to smoke here. The media actually reported great numbers of volunteers, seasoned organizers, feeding thousands daily their meals and snacks from three kitchens, free kitchens, running medical tents, recycling, cleaning porta potties, and hauling trash. Volunteers told KHON2 News that anyone who comes into the Pu Uhonua is welcome. Pu Uhonua means place of refuge of Hona Uno. It's the ancestral home of the Kamehameha dynasty. The Hona Uno regards itself as, a, as sovereign under international law, a successor government to the independent kingdom of Hawaii, not subject to U.S. law. The base camp is now a community of learning. Activist professors set up Puhulu Hulu University with 20 classes a day on Hawaiian culture and language. KHON2 reported that the resolve of the Ku Kia Imana, the guardians of the mountain, grows stronger every day, and the Star Advertiser has called this struggle a boiling point. Now, TMT Corporation and the University of Hawaii plans this $1.4 billion telescope and related facilities to be 18 stories high and cover the size of six football fields, far larger than all of the previous opposed projects. This massive project has been blocked for years by community resistance, and yes, the previous projects did leave toxic waste and seepage on site. Mauna Kea is part of stolen crown lands. Queen Liliu Okolani of Hawaii was overthrown in 1893 by a cabal of sugar planters and settler businessmen. Two years later, the U.S. annexed it as a territory. It was made the 50th state in 1959. Mauna Kea was targeted for development because it's the tallest mountain in the Hawaiian chain, with the summit 13,803 feet above sea level the highest point in Hawaii, making the dry, mostly cloud-free skies there less affected by city light pollution. Most of the dormant volcano is underwater when measured from its oceanic base. It's the tallest mountain in the world, over 32,808 feet in height. It's about a million years old, and it's the second largest, just to go into a little geology, and subaerial surface area of the filed shield volcanoes of the Big Island. But the TMT Corporation has an alternate site selected in the Canary Islands, and by all reports, La Palma, Spain, they want the project. Mauna Kea is unique for its rare indigenous plants and animals, but more importantly, it's of deep significance to Hawaiians and all Pacific Islanders. It was even honored in a January 2011 National Geographic special edition called The Earth's Holiest Places, Sacred Journeys. It's a sacred place for Kanaka Maoli and all Polynesian nations. It represents creation, the embodiment of ancestors, a burial ground, and it's home to a hundred archeological sites, hundreds of cultural sites, historic and still used shrines, three of which are directly endangered. On the first day of the blockade, protectors spent over 11 hours on the road access cattle guard. Kanaka Maoli protector and professor at University of Hawaii, Noalani Goodyear Ka'opua, formed arm in arm with the other women, the Wahine, to protect the elders from heavily armed officers. And she said, 
the Kupuna there had made a line and wanted to be the first line of defense. She pointed out three grounds for opposition. Mauna Kea is both sacred and the watershed for Hawaii Island's fresh water supply and the burial ground. She said it's unceded, unrelinquished, unrelinquished stolen Hawaiian land. And further, as an important watershed, it's zoned for conservation to protect and preserve natural resources necessary for the survival of the people. In other words, the 30 meter telescope plan meets the definition of a genocidal occupation. Now you may see some online discussions of Native Hawaiians about the base of the problem being the construct of the U.S. judicial system in dealing with indigenous issues. That it's rooted in the ideals of colonizers whose views on spirituality are restricted to organized class society based religion. Indigenous people have deep connections with the lands and relations with all of life which doesn't translate into class societies intolerance of those whom it has colonized and regards as lesser than subhuman or uncivilized. Bourgeois capitalist culture places no intrinsic value on Mother Earth, our biosphere, life on Earth, clean water, clean air, indigenous animals, plants, the habitats. It only values life itself for profits. Its values are therefore diametrically opposed to those carried by indigenous peoples worldwide. Resistance is spreading. Thousands marched in Waikiki on Saturday. And on Friday, indigenous rights groups and elders, Berkeley and other visiting Islander students demonstrated in Sproul Plaza, the center of the Berkeley campus, to demand that UCB divest. Now the principal investor in TMT is Gordon Moore. He's a Silicon Valley venture capitalist, along with Caltech. Kanaka Mali Berkeley student, Bria Tennyson, answered the false claim of natives versus science. Our very identity as a people is based on studying the stars. That's how we got to Hawaii in the first place. Now on Sunday, an organization of Asian Pacific Islander gay and trans people demonstrated here in Union Square. Interestingly, hundreds of impacted astronomers have signed a letter against forcing the project on the Hawaiian people and raised concerns about sovereignty and intrusions on indigenous lands. The letter cites past environmental racism and, quote, white colonizers' obsessions with conquest, unquote. An astrophysicist at University of New Hampshire, Chanda Prescott Weinstein, who signed the letter, stated, quote, what's facilitated scientific access to Mauna Kea is American colonialism on Kanaka Oiwi land. In what we call the state of Hawaii, it is the American state apparatus that continues to play a role in enforcing astronomer access to the mana. For example, with the police forces this week arresting the kupuna, the elders, who took great physical risk to protect their family. TMT has been falsely portrayed over and over as science versus Native Hawaiians, but it's a for-profit project. The state and the university have made millions from these projects. To allege Kanaka Maui or against astronomy is just plain racist. Pacific Islanders have practiced astronomy for ages. They navigated the Pacific Ocean by the stars. This week, State Lieutenant Governor Josh Green met with Kanaka Maui for four hours, attempting a compromise, but he came away speaking about the Hawaiian people's own visions of their future. And some state representatives and city council members asked Governor E.K. to rescind the emergency proclamation stating it violates the spirit of the law. Protests have spread to the tourism industry. Organizers called for a one-day tourism boycott on Monday. Old, and this is a company, I guess, Laina Luau, canceled its nightly beach luau for tourists. And most of its workers were expected to join the boycott, so it just gave them the day off. Skyline Hawaii canceled zipline tours, bicycle and van tours. A majority of tourists expressed understanding. And Hilo County Council passed a resolution, I think it was this morning, in support of State Senator Kai Kahele's call for a 60-day moratorium, a cooling off period, as Governor E.K. is still pushing for the TMT build. And I'd like to give you a taste of the testimony, if I have another minute. They spoke of decades of mistreatment of the Hawaiian people and lands. Kama no, Nawa Kinimaka, descended from the royal guard for King Kalakaua, said our land is dying and it's not just in Hawaii. What the Hawaiian represents is a symbol of the indigenous native people of our world. The Hawaiian people have been refined into a fine diamond of symbolism. 
Ikai Kamarso said TMT is just a match after so many years of gasoline being poured on our ground. Millicent Cummings called the TMT an act of war to the Mana and the Kanaka. And Robert Yamada said, we're dedicated to educating all about what happened at the overthrow, what happened since then, and how we can move forward. TMT is the catalyst. It's the line in the sand. Do not cross that line. For us, as Marxists and Marcionists, this battle, along with the struggle in Puerto Rico, are part of the legacy of settler colonialism. This is what we mean when we say we support self-determination. The Kanaka Maui are the ones who should decide on any development in their islands, and not just the big island. 